Ivan Vasilenko, Russian businessman and public figure, has a PhD in economy, business coach, professional with more than 25 years of experience, has a successful business career, president and founder of the financial consulting holding Life is Good, chairman of the housing cooperative Best Way, president of IBA, International Business Academy, the creator of a number of economic programs as well as a unique business model in the field of multi-level marketing, Life is Good Network, leader of the Success Formula program cycle on TV, philanthropist, ambassador of peace, honored with honorary awards and recognized by state authorities, Russian and foreign business elites, public organizations, leading media. There wasn't a single bad speaker among the great leaders. Look at these faces. Look at these photos. All these people have achieved something. They left a legacy and they became a part of history, of world history. Those were great speakers. In the USSR, Rhetoric was essentially banned. This is a very serious weapon. Generals, commanders who led armies used it in order to earn money you have to speak well you have to be effective you must be able to influence people bring your thoughts through to the people you must be able to use words gestures speech to be eloquent the more official you look during your public appearance the better the commander, who came in front of the troops, spoke to his people. In old times, to be able to rule, you had to be a speaker. People who came in front of the troops wore military uniforms. The uniform cannot be unbuttoned. The uniform is always buttoned up. When I am criticized in social media that the bottom button should be unbuttoned, this is historically wrong. They are amateurs who do not know history and do not know the history of eloquence. Because originally, a speaker is an officer, an officer in a buttoned-up uniform. The lower button is allowed to be unbuttoned when you sit down at the table not to crumple the suit. Every speaking performance starts with the way you look. You should button up. You should wear a suit. Buy yourself a suit or two, which you will wear only on stage. On stage, you should look perfect, nothing extra, starting with the shoe and ending with your hair. Shoes. The perfect women's shoes for performance are shoes with closed toes. Your toes and your heels should be covered not to distract. For men, black classic shoes with laces. Shoes must be clean. When you are on stage, the audience pays attention to everything. For men, when you meet a woman for the first time, she looks first at your hands and second at your shoes. First, your hands, second, your shoes. Keep it in mind. Even though you may love to work in your garden, your summer house, your car, your hands should always be clean. Your hands should always be well maintained and clean. If you are engaged in financial business, if you are a speaker, if you work with people, you should be up to it. If you speak about money, 
If you speak about millions, if you position yourself as a rich person, you should look accordingly. Men should wear solid color suits. The costume is a jacket and trousers of the same color, not jeans and a jacket, not a checked suit, only solid color. Brown suits are not allowed. Hotel porters wear brown suits. You can wear black, gray, or a blue suit. A white shirt is ideal for men. The white color gives you confidence. It is a color of purity. The tie must be a solid color, without ornaments and flower patterns, etc. It should either be solid or some geometric pattern. It is ideal to have a diagonal stripe on your tie. Hairstyle. Always a neat hairstyle. If you have any defects on your face, or if in your country, in your culture, there is such a tradition, a beard and mustache is allowed. But ideally, the face should be clean-shaven. It brings more confidence and more openness. Attributes. Plastic pens are not allowed. You should not have any cheap items. Only the best quality attributes. A wallet, business cards, business card holder, expensive, good pens. Large pins are not allowed. Only a pin with the name of your club or company. One ring on the right hand and one ring on the left hand, or vice versa, are allowed. This applies to ladies too. The watch should be a good one, either with a leather bracelet or a gold bracelet. You should wear the attributes of a successful person. Ladies. Ladies have more liberties in clothes on stage, but as a rule, they should wear a business suit, closed shoes, skirt, not above the middle of the knee. She can wear a pantsuit or a skirt not above the middle of the knee. Ladies should not wear transparent clothes, in no case. Why? Because men have their own fantasies. And when a man looks at a lady in transparent clothes, he immediately gets distracted. He does not hear what she says. He will imagine something completely different. Therefore, transparent clothes are not permitted, neither at business negotiations nor on stage. Your hair shouldn't hang loose. This is also a great distraction. There should not be a ring on each finger. Be careful with makeup. It should be a restrained, inconspicuous makeup. Ladies, you should always wear lingerie, comfortable lingerie. A bra should always be on. Everything has to be covered, nothing should stick out. You should be dressed appropriately because you are a business lady. You deliver your speech to an audience. You must be effective and not to distract men by your various charms. The stricter you look, the more confidence. Look at these slides. Who gets more confidence? If you are in the room speaking about business, about money, 
Who is more trustworthy? Any speech starts with yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, you must clearly keep this in mind. It is not allowed to look crumpled on stage. The people who look at you pay attention to everything. You do not have the right to go on stage unprepared. You must prepare before going on stage. Do you have an assistant? Ask him to look at you before you go on stage, to see if you have a tie, if everything is in order. Because at each training, I see people with an open fly when they come up to me before going on stage. It happens because when the person is getting ready, he thinks about what to say and dresses automatically, and he sometimes forgets to button his fly. Look, you're all right. You should look tidy. You have no right to disgrace yourself. You have no right to go out and distract the audience. If you want to be effective, start with your appearance. It's true. I didn't make any of it up. Your performance begins with your appearance. If they like you, they will listen to you. I have almost no complaints to men, but I always have a lot of complaints to ladies. Dear ladies, pay attention to the way you look. Take care of yourself. Go to a beauty salon. Use makeup. Pay attention to your clothes. When a woman comes on stage, she should look appropriate. She should be the queen. Everyone should want to be like her, to look like her, to be as successful as her, to be as beautiful as her. In this case, she leads the people. It all starts with the appearance. It's the beginning. The way you look is a business card of your bank account. Or, this is the business card of your welfare, your well-being. If the audience likes the way you look, they will like your speech. They will ask themselves, why is he better than me? What does he do that I don't know? What can he say now? What can I learn to become as successful as he is? Getting on stage. You shouldn't hurry when you are going on stage, but you shouldn't walk slowly either. You should keep your pace. Otherwise, you will kill your speech at the very beginning. Even if you are afraid and tremble, nobody will see it. You should come on stage with confidence. Look at Silvio Berlusconi. He walks with dignity. With his shoulders straight, with a smile. He has a confident step. You should practice. A confident, calm step. There is an audience to listen to your speech. Posture is necessary. Practice. 
надо приучить свои мышцы держать осанку. Это все воспитывается, приучается. Не сутульте, очень некрасиво. When you get on stage, find your place on it that is right for you. Исходное положение начинается с положения ног. Watch your feet. Don't put them too far from each other. It doesn't look well, especially for women. You want to show your figure? But it is not right. You should feel comfortable to stand, because you will have to speak one hour or 45 minutes. That's why there should be some distance between your feet. How to know this distance? It's the right one. If you can put a foot between yours, then you will feel stable and will be able to put your weight from one foot to another, and this way your feet will feel relaxed. The audience won't even pay attention to it. It's ideal to walk on stage, but not to run, not to move too much. When you are already a professional, you can allow yourself to move more. While you are a beginner, you should focus the attention of the audience on yourself. You should stand in a fixed position, not to walk, not to jump. Remember, when a preschooler is called to the blackboard, how is he standing there? Like this? Or is he swaying? What is this? Your feet hurt. It is a sign of a person who wants to run away. It is a sign of a person who is not sure of himself. You may not even know about it. You may do it unconsciously. Or you may jump. Again, it's a sign of the same things. People see this non-verbal communication. You don't even realize it. People may not realize it, but they see these nonverbal signs. And they know you are not sure of yourself. You're not an experienced speaker. You don't speak with authority. Who will trust you if you are not sure of yourself? You won't be able to lead the audience. You won't be able to give them the information. So you have to position yourself on stage. You should feel comfortable standing there. Ladies, don't sway on your heels. You should keep your body straight, always straight. Ladies, keep your chest forward. You look short of yourself, you look pretty. Come up to the wall, put your shoulder blades to it and remember this position. Don't round your shoulders. Do this exercise all the time until your muscles are in good shape. When you round your shoulders, your voice doesn't come out well. When you keep your shoulders straight, your voice comes out of your stomach. So keep your body straight. The position of your hands. Don't stand as if you are a soldier on guard. As a rule, people come out on stage like this. But they shouldn't. They shouldn't stand as defenders on a soccer team. We are not in a secret police. Keep your hands calm. Don't pull anything. Don't keep your fingers in a fist. Keep your shoulders straight and let your arms hang. This should be a comfortable position. The position of your head. Your chin should be parallel to the floor. Don't look as if you are going to kill somebody. Don't raise your head arrogantly. Your chin should be parallel to the floor. It is your initial position. And now, very important, I want you to pay attention to this. You got on stage, you found your place on it, and the first thing you do, you make a pause to arrange visual contact. Never start speaking at once. You should make a pause before speaking. This way, you attract the attention of the audience. And you have visual contact. Your pause shouldn't be short. 
The audience has to be quiet. If you don't have visual contact, people don't hear you. You won't be effective. You won't be able to make a speech. I'll show you a very simple exercise how to have a visual contact. Pick out three people. There is a lady on the left, a young man in the center, and a man on the right. You pick out three people and look them in the eyes. You look left, you look in front of you, you look right, again and again. You look three people in the eyes. Because at the beginning it will be hard for you to look all the people in the audience in the eyes. When you get used, when you have this habit, you will be able to see everybody. If you don't look people in the eyes, they don't hear you. They don't understand. You won't be effective. If a person doesn't look you in the eyes, it means he lies. That's why number one is to keep visual contact with the audience. If you speak in a big room, there are people there that are sitting far away. And of course, you don't even see them. Pick out three people and communicate with them. Only three. The audience will have an illusion that you are communicating with each of them. They will think that you look each of them in the eyes. Visual contact is a must. You pick out three people and look them in the eyes, in turn. You don't look at the floor, at the ceiling, at the wall. You speak and look them in the eyes. If you don't do it, you are not a speaker and it's worth nothing. Visual contact is a must. You should look people in the audience in the eyes every minute, every second. Then you hear them and they hear you. Eyes are the mirror of the soul. This keeps the audience alert. They don't fall asleep. They feel as if you are communicating with each of them. Gestures. People are wrong when they say that if you don't have enough words, you make gestures. If a speaker doesn't make gestures, his audience doesn't hear him at all. Keep in mind, your gestures are 70% of your success. Your speech without gestures is worth nothing. Nobody hears you. You should duplicate every word with your hand. Keep your hands above your waist while speaking. Your palms are up. This way you show you are open. If you make a gesture with your palm down, like this group sits down here, you go there. It's a pressure. If you show with your palm up, this group sits here and you sit there. You show your good attitude. Don't make too many gestures, of course. If you don't play Shakespeare on stage, you work with your hands. Don't put them into fists. You may have heard some speakers say that when you put your fingers in a steeple, it makes you feel more sure of yourself. It may help when you don't feel well at all. But don't spread your fingers. It doesn't look pretty. Second, don't put your hands together. Great speakers never do it. If you work with an interpreter, you say some text, he translates, and while he is doing it, you can put your hands together. You don't put them into fists, you don't clasp them as a boxer. Your hands shouldn't hang, shouldn't be in a pocket. They should work. One word, one gesture. This is how great military people speak. This is history. This is what great people write and how they speak. That's why your every word should go together with a gesture. 
Your gesture adds a lot to your speech, and non-verbally means much more than the words you say. The expression on your face, it should express what you are talking about. If you speak about something serious, your expression should be serious. It should help your speech. If you speak about mourning, your face has to express grief. If you speak about happiness, your face has to be happy. Your eyes have to shine. Then your audience will get what you say. Your speech, your eyes and the expression of your face should be eloquent. Articulation. Do you know that announcers on Central TV are selected very carefully for their job? You have to practice. Most people in the audience get information through visualization. That's why articulation is very important. People have to hear you and to see you. You have to be very articulate. Use tongue twisters for practice. Your voice volume. Have you paid attention that when you turn on loud music, at first it feels uncomfortable? But after some time, you can go to sleep with loud music playing. Has anybody gone to sleep when loud music was playing or when the TV was turned on loudly? The same thing happens when you turn on the music low. If you speak all the time in a low voice, in the same tone, people in the audience will go to sleep in seven minutes. The same will happen if you speak loudly in the same tone. But what will happen if you change the volume? Your speech should be like a roller coaster. Down and up, down and up. Your speech should excite, give people a start. Those people who attended my lectures experienced this. My audience reacts, especially when I speak with the microphone. I don't give people a chance to sleep. I do it on purpose because I know how it works. The tone and volume of your voice have to change all the time. Remember when your teacher at school shouted, be quiet! You'll be heard even better if you make your voice low. If you want to underline something in your speech, don't raise your voice. Make it low, even to a whisper. When you do it, the audience becomes quiet. Even if you drop a needle, people will hear it. You should master the volume of your voice. Remember how we recited poems at school? Practice. Tell jokes. The sound of your voice can be as eloquent as your words. The speed of your speech. People with visual type of perception usually speak fast. It's because they see faster than they can speak about it. As a rule, they chatter very fast. There are people that have auditive type of perception. They have a middle speech tempo. And there are people that have a kinesthetic type of perception. They have to feel every word. They usually speak slowly. You have to understand that, as a rule, there are people of all types in your audience. That's why you shouldn't speak fast. Part of the audience won't get what you say. You shouldn't speak slowly, because most of the people will get angry with you. They will hate you. 
That's why you have to be somewhere in between to be heard. The speed of your speech is very important. You shouldn't be too fast, chatter, and you shouldn't speak too slowly, because it will make people mad. So, use a normal speech tempo, pause technique. It is a very powerful tool. If you want to be heard, if you want to underline something, you should use pauses. First, a pause gives people time to understand what you say. If you say some thought and you want it to be remembered, make a pause. Let people think about it, and it gives you a chance to organize your own thoughts. Even if you got off track, it happens, say, what was I talking about? Make a pause and think. People won't pay attention to it. They will think, oh, great. What does he mean? How smart he is. And at this time, you are trying to remember what you were talking about and to decide what to say next. You had your time, you say, by the way, and go on with your thoughts. Pauses are a must. You should keep long pauses. Your audience thinks during this time. Do you understand? People will be happy with you if, after a long pause, you continue speaking with energy. Contrast is what you always pay attention to. Intonation. Intonation is very important. The whole meaning of your speech is in intonation. If your intonation is right, people will remember your thought. The right intonation persuades. Now, I will explain to you why you don't understand why after listening to one speaker, you leave dissatisfied, and after listening to another one, you leave greatly impressed. You go home and hear his voice in your head. The main tool of a hypnotist is a change of intonation. You start speaking in one tone and use it from 30 seconds to one minute. Then you change your intonation and say what you want to say. Your listener's brain is still on the wave which it tuned to at the beginning. Our consciousness is not able to change its vibrations at once. But, if you change your tone, what you said later remains in your brain and your subconscious. Changing intonation is the most powerful tool in linguistics. I want you to realize the importance of changing your tone during your speech. Listen to great speakers that speak on TV. Listen to the singers who change the tone of their voice to unnatural. When you change the tone of your voice, people remember it. Change your intonation. Start speaking, then speak higher, even higher, then change it to the low and people will remember you. People will remember what you have said. The intonation of the word is more important than the word itself. Humor. Every 20 minutes, there should be a joke in your speech. The shortest way to your listener is to say a suitable joke.
you can insert some humor even into a very serious speech. It's better to have a set of cliches. A famous actor was once asked if it is appropriate to use cliché. He said that if an actor uses only five clichés, he's a bad actor. If he uses 15 to 20 clichés, he's a good actor. But if an actor has 50 clichés, he is a genius. I know an MC in St. Petersburg. He is not young, a great speaker, a great MC, and a master of humor. He has a lot of writing pads that he never shows to anybody. He watches TV, he goes to concerts, listens to great speakers, reads books and writes jokes into his pads. He reads them all the time because you can't learn everything by heart. But some things stick in your memory. When you work with an audience, you know what you are going to say and can foresee the reaction. It's useful to prepare several good jokes in advance. Then you can use them during your speech and they will look like improvisation. But only beginners think it's improvisation. Professionals prepare for the speech in advance. So, you should use humor. Remember, Baron Munchausen once said, Ladies and gentlemen, smile! A serious expression of your face doesn't mean you are very smart. Remember that very often people do stupid things with a serious expression on their faces. People like to be entertained, but not to be taught. When you are listening to a lecture, you usually like the speaker who makes you laugh. You understand him better. You fall in love with a speaker who tells you jokes. Keep it in mind. If you give a people a lot of serious facts, they will be bored. The shortest distance between you and the audience is a good joke. Use jokes if you want to be successful. Let's sum up now. You see 14 points I told you about. You can't simultaneously learn them and use them. You can't do it simultaneously. But you can do it one by one. You will master every point and you will leave this lecture being a professional that can open any door. You can be a professional. People will listen to you and you'll become their favorite speaker. We know how to achieve it. We have all the technique. You should use all these 14 points in every speech. The way you look. You should be an example, a role model. People should want to be like you. Posture and the way you walk. Straight back. Quiet walk. The way you put your feet, the way you keep your hands, visual contact is a must. Look in the eyes of the people that listen to you. Use gestures, one word, one gesture. Use your hands. The expression of your face. It should express the things you say. Articulation. Articulate every word for people to be able to hear and understand. Слышать и понять. Дикция и артикуляция. 
the volume of your voice. Your speech should be like a roller coaster. Higher, lower, higher, lower. The speed of your speech. It shouldn't be fast or slow. Pause technique. Don't chatter. Make pauses. Intonation. Use it. It's the main point in the art of speaking. Humor. Use a joke every 15 to 20 minutes of your speech. But don't try to be too humorous. Now, look at the screen. I'll show you some very important things. Content of your speech is only 7% important. Pauses, intonation. The volume of your voice make 34%. The way you look is responsible for 59%. You can be the best student at school. But nobody will listen to you and follow you. Because you have knowledge, but you don't know how to influence people. You are not effective because you cannot communicate your knowledge to people. But those who want to be effective are ready to learn and will master these techniques, will conquer the world. They will have money, power, respect, authority and influence. It's not always important what people say, but it's always important how they say it and how they look. A short speech is always more meaningful and impressive, so prepare for your speech. Don't just talk, talk. Use simple language. Don't try to look too smart. Your audience are ordinary people. Don't show them you are smarter than them. You are one of them. In this case, it will be interesting for them to find out who you are. Use simple words, people will hear and understand you. They won't be afraid of what you are telling them. If you use beautiful but unknown terms, people won't understand you. Smart phrases and words that most people don't understand don't make you look better and closer to the public. So use simple language for people in the audience to feel that you are one of them. They will trust you and will follow you because they like you. A word from your heart gets deep into the heart of another person. What does it mean? Sincerity and sharing of your feelings. People like it when you tell them about yourself. You can learn some text by heart and then tell it to the audience. 
People won't be interested. But when you say a magic phrase, once it happened to me, and then tell the audience about yourself, it will be interesting. People want to know who you are, how you got what you have, what is better about you. They want to be like you. That's why it's better to tell something from your own experience. When you are telling it, you feel it, and your audience feels it too. If you feel like crying, the audience will cry with you. If you remember your fear, people will feel it too. These are non-verbal signs that people perceive. And look in the eyes. I'm talking to you now. And I don't look down or at the ceiling or at the walls. Be able to communicate with the audience. And the biggest part of the audience are ladies. You have to respect them, to love them, to say good words to them. They have to like you. So think about your audience as if it is a lady. Gentlemen, how do you treat ladies? You have to treat your beloved audience the same way. You shouldn't argue with it, be rude to it. What to do? If there is a person in the audience that argues and prevents you from speaking, the first method, what is your name? We've noticed you. We see you are very competent. Pay attention to him. He'll be happy and will stop talking. Everybody will look at him and there will sure be somebody who will tell him to shut up. If he goes on distracting you and shouting, invite him to come on stage. Tell us your name. Please, come here. He'll lose his courage, and when he comes on stage, he won't be able to speak, because he won't be from the public anymore. He'll be alone. The audience will drive him away. But if you reprimand him while he is in the audience, all the people will be against you. Never argue with a woman and never argue with an audience. You should love it, smile at it. Speaking in public is impossible without knowing the subject you are going to speak about. If you want to speak in public, you have to be 100% prepared and competent. Because any question may be asked, and you have to answer it. During your speech, you shouldn't think about what to say, only how to say it. You must have a goal, why you came on stage, what you want to tell people, what mission you have. A person who is unable to speak will never make a career. Learn to speak. Learn how to be effective. Then you'll get money, respect, power, authority. You'll have a beautiful life. 
All the doors will be open for you. You'll get everything you want from life. Learn how to influence people, how to lead them. Be happy, healthy and rich.